Can I call this meeting to order for October the 20th, 2020? Result of the agenda for the October 20th, 2020 regular meeting of council be adopted as received. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor with Tony. All in favor? It's carried. We have Councilor Gray by video tonight. Good evening, Councilor Gray. Good evening. Result of the minutes of the October 6, 2020 regular council meeting and the October 13, 2020 committee of the whole meeting be received and approved. Moved by Councilor Friesen, seconded by Councilor Morio. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <clears throat> Moving down to 6.1. Result of building permits 8220 through 8920 with a total estimated value of $456,800 being received. Moved by Officer White, second. Deputy Mayor Wittoni. Discussion. Councilor Delorey. I see one of them were putting a C cam on the main street somewhere. Okay, that's the hospital. Oh, oh, okay. It's a hospital. Okay, okay, yeah, I get it. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 7.1. Resolve that the sorry, resolve the director of public works report be received. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintonia. Discussion? Council Memorial. No, Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <laughs> 721. Resolve that the September 20, 2020 Protective Services report be received. Moved by uh, Council Memorial. Seconded by Tony. Discussion. Councilor White. More comment while we're on this topic. Uh, I understand uh, congratulations are ordered to Chief Fedorchuk, who I believe I'm correct when I'm saying has been a Detroit appointed uh, fire chief for the province of Manitoba, provincial fire chief representing the province of Manitoba as a whole. A compliment to him and his team for uh, making this happen, and uh, obviously we support. Yeah. Much of what he does, but the majority. So, uh, a real credit to, to Chief Fedorchuk for working hard and uh, having the respect of the province as a whole, which reflects on our community, of course. So, thank you, uh, Chief. Thank you for those words. Further discussion on the report? Councillor Delorier. On the one call uh, on the uh, September the 4th, do you know if we'll be billing for that? It doesn't seem like it'd be mutual aid. I, I know you probably don't have an answer right now, but you can find out. I think that was the last one. To mental okay. school. Yeah. Councillor Gray, did you have a question? No, no. I'm good. Okay. <clears throat> Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? 7.3 reports. Start with uh, Deputy Mayor Antonio. I have nothing to report this time around. Okay. Uh, Councilor Morio. Um, last week spent two days um, touring and spending time with our potential CEO candidates, uh, uh, touring them around the town and uh, listening to their formal presentations in the second phase of the interview process. And also had um, some more union uh, negotiation preparatory meetings with administration and council. That's all I have. Okay, Councillor Friesen. Um, I enjoyed the interviewees also. They were uh, both excellent. I uh, had a meeting last night in regards to Christmas coming around the corner. Um, if anyone out there would like to uh, donate money or adopt a building at the museum, it will be uh, turned on December the 5th, but anybody that wants to do a building can go out anytime and decorate it 
before it gets to be minus 30. And if you don't want to decorate the building, perhaps you'd like to just make a monetary contribution to help buy lights for some of these buildings. Uh, yeah, right. Okay, thank you, and uh, we look forward to, uh, to seeing that display again. It'll be strictly drive through this time. Okay. Thank you. Councillor White. I'm fairly busy. Uh, it's interesting uh, the parallels. PMH is right now going through a, a CEO search also. Uh, Teddy Gilson, the present CEO, is retiring in April. And uh, that process is somewhat similar to what the town is doing. So we've been meeting on that. And uh, I had the pleasure of one afternoon spending some time with one of our CAO candidates, which was uh, enlightening. And then they, both the evenings with them, where we met them in a more formal setting, and then back here, where we went through more uh, specifics of what they can do. It's uh, pretty exhausting. I want to compliment yourself, your worship, and your team for making all that happen. Uh, also, I, I, I had a, a call with uh, Staff Sergeant Campbell and Staff Sergeant Terry Lussier relative to the uh, potential leaving of Staff Sergeant Campbell from Swan River and moving to Dauphin He's, when he sells his house, that's why I say potential. And the new candidate, hypothetically, is close to being chosen. And when they sell their house, they will move to Swan River. So it's, uh, it's a bit of a merry-go-round with our Staff Sergeants. Uh, it's a concern of mine and I think the community. Then on the 19th, I had a, a help meeting with the, the harm people. And one of the things that came up is they were pleased with our community. I think we have nine, uh, Mr. Poole helped me here, I think they have nine sharp disposal locations in, in our community right now. And uh, if that committee had any way, ability to nudge or send money, uh, they'd appreciate the possibility of us putting more up. So I, I sold that seed for you, sir, sir, because there was a need. Uh, I went on a I walk about uh, with some of the help people this spring. I think we found about 20 needles in our, in our laying in the grass, laying places where little children can step on them. I don't know if the disposal thing will help a lot in those instances, but if they, they help the one, I'm excited about it. Uh, they talked about the protocol to help the needy, uh, specifically the people who have been displaced from the apartment that burned down over there, and that's a never ending job. And I suggested to them that perhaps they do a media release of what they're about. What does the help committee do? What does the harm committee do? How are they helping? How can people help them? So, some people in need. I also, uh, Councilor Moore and I today informally met with Ward Perchuk, the president of Spruce Products, and he's very interested in looking at maybe crunching some numbers and, and some mechanisms to get water out to the mill. So, I sow that seed to uh, you, Mr. Poole. You're a busy, busy man, I know, but uh, Spruce Products is vital to our community. It's, uh, so I'd ask you, uh, somewhere on your list, if you could make some numbers for Ward. I'm assuming he's going to be following up with the discussion with you, sir. And I think it's really, really a compliment to our community as a whole. I spent far too much time on Facebook, but when Mr. Pewish recently was talking about tendering his resignation and the contribution I had today, he's still on our staff. And I'm going to say there were at least 20 community members who probably never had tickets and never will, but supporting him, say good job, way to go, those are those are laws, laws are to be respected. If you have a, a YouTube, sir, you, you posted something, uh, and, and Mr. Mario did too, and, and our community is supports law and order. They support the rules being obeyed, and Mr. P wishes uh, don't shoot the messenger. And I think he's uh, doing a wonderful job and a compliment to our town for supporting him in probably a pretty difficult time. You know, he was pretty, pretty down. So thanks to our town and Mr. Pewish. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor DeLorde. Um, aside from the uh, three evenings we, we met all together last night, which you guys were all there for, I had a library board meeting in Benito yesterday. Um, Nothing exciting there. The only, we went over uh, where we're at financially for the year, the only area of concern is with uh, late fees. It's actually a substantial amount we collect that we haven't collected this year, so that'll be a hole in our budget. Uh, partially because we had about a three month period where the library wasn't open, and then partially because we waived during the, we waived considerable length of time once we did open, people that had books out, or people that took their books out and 
It works all through quarantine, that type of thing. So there's going to be a little bit of a hole there. We, we have reserves to cover it, but uh, or we have surplus to cover it. Um, but other than that, nothing, uh, nothing else to report on why we have. Okay, thank you. Councillor Gray? Um, I don't have a lot to report. Um, we all had the same three meetings, most of which was not appropriate for us to talk about in open session, so I'm not going to deal with that. Um, in terms of recreation, um, I think progress is some progress is being made on the pool. Um, the lawsuit is uh, apparently stalled. Somebody asked the question, um, how much does the small fees for the year? It's $2,000. So we know that about six hours of work was done on the entire year on that file. So that's not a great thing. Um, and we, um, Ms. Novak has at this point at least uh, tendered a resignation, but I think that's something we should discuss in um, camera. We will be. And that's it. Okay, there was a settlement service. I should tell you, there was a settlement services meeting this evening um, and I've gone over with them that Tuesdays are not a great day for um, any council, I think all of the councils that are involved with settlement services uh, meet on Tuesdays, but anyway, it is what it is. Okay, thank you. Um, again, when Councillor Gray said that I, we were all kind of in the same meetings for the last uh, couple of weeks, and I am looking forward to continue processing our CA or hunt, if you want to call it that. Um, just on some words uh, in reference, or just uh, carrying on from what Councillor White said in regards to our bylaw officer, and I, I uh, it's, it's it's disappointing, but I guess it's not surprising. Maybe in social media, but at the end of the day, council supports all our employees. What they do, we set out policies, we set out bylaws, and to have exactly what you just said, law and order. And if somebody doesn't like it or they feel that they have been on the wrong end of something or they, they want to challenge their their, uh, their their fines, we have a process for that. They can contact the, uh, the uh, administration and uh, if they're not happy with the bylaws, well, that's what we're here elected for, so those people can come to us and, and, and uh, for us to hear what the, their opinions are. So at the end of the day, uh, we do support our employees. 731, resolve the acting CAO report be received, moved by Councillor White, seconded by <coughs> Councillor Morio. Discussion, anything? Uh, okay, go ahead, Councillor. I have two questions. Uh, I guess, what are Pappy lights? These are the approach lights on the runway clear. And they're not working? Currently, they are malfunctioning. We have to sit on a no-tan here now. And the no-tan uh, alerts all planes nearby that they can't land here and make that. Okay, thank you. The other query that I asked for, the, on 9th Avenue over there, they put up a, a, a speed indicator. If, I'm sure there's a protocol of why it was like 50 yards, 100 yards from the stop sign as opposed to halfway. It was just brought to my attention and they asked if I could find out the answer, which I don't know. Just uh, with the range of the, the radar sign, it was put so it was put there so that it would read when people are in the center of okay. the middle of nine. They will be there for a two to three week period. We'll collect the data. And so you're in the middle. Of this, you pick, as you're pulling up, you see what you're doing in the middle. Well, people are usually speeding with their highest in the I would say the, the center of the shooting. Okay. Middle. Do we have more coming? More side? As long as we budget for them, yeah. So we don't have any coming for a while? No. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? <clears throat> Opposed? It's carried. 10.1. Resolve that uh, council's polls be hereby approved for payment. General council check is number 26767 to 26808 for a total of 1935817 Payroll council checks number 4740 to number 4746 
for a total of $93,239.29. Moved by Councilor Delorier, seconded by Councilor Morio. Discussion? Councilor Morio? Um, <clears throat> check number 26778 to Don Bueller Bennett and Services for a Main Street Connection blockage. Oh, that was, uh, that was way back in February, the, the fire in Nevada building. So we had a problem in our main, it was a blockage, but uh, for some reason it affected only that uh, service and there was a lot of dollars spent in inspections and all of, all of that, which the owner paid Don to look after. But because it was a problem in the main, we determined that we would cover that cost. So that includes plumber's costs, our back truck costs, everything that, uh, that went into the inspection of that line. Uh, all costs. Anything further, Councilor Moore? Councilor Gray? Yes, Your Worship. Um, I, I wish to declare a conflict. There, there is one check to my law office. It was because we paid taxes for a client who then paid them as well. And so um, I put that on record just in case anyone's looking through and wondering why David Gray Law Office got paid $1,000. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Any further discussion? Councilor Morio? Opposed? It's carried. If you can record my abstention, obviously. Okay, thank you. 10.2, resolve that council authorized payment of the annual grant of $8,000 to the Swan Valley Chamber of Commerce, as was included in the 2020 financial plan to be used towards the chamber projects and operations. Moved by for Mayor Antoni, second by Councillor Gray. Discussion? Councillor Gray, do you have a, your hand is up. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 10.3, <clears throat> resolve that the annual grant of $1,000 to the Swan River Association for Community Living, included in the 2020 financial plan, be approved for payment. Moved by Councilor White, second by Councilor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 10.4 Resolve that the Council authorized payment of the annual grant of $4,000 as included in the 2020 financial plan to the Swan Valley Historical Museum. Moved by Deputy and Tony, second by Councilor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 10.5, whereas the 2020 capital budget included $10,000 for household, household hazardous waste building to be borne by Federal Gas Tax Reserve, and the building has been constructed at a cost of $9,462.81. Be it, be it hereby resolved that $9,462.81 be transferred from the Federal Gas Tax Reserve Fund to the General Operating Fund. Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor White. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <clears throat> 106 Resolve that the financial statements for the nine months ending September the 30th, 2020 be adopted as received. Moved by Councillor Delorier, second by Councillor Gray. Discussion? Councillor Delorier. Um, in other revenue, other revenue is one of the bigger places where we're, where our income is, is not what we had budgeted. Um, I see we have a, a conditional municipal grant outstanding for 95,000. Do we know what that is? Or are we expecting it? Mr. Ganita, can you answer that? I accrued uh, January to September for uh, Swan Valley West Purchase Services. So there's still the last quarter that will be coming uh, later. Okay, so that's, that's where our purchase service uh, money comes in is in conditional municipal? Yes. Okay. 
And then uh, my only other question is environmental health and other 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 revenue. Um, we're, we're short quite a bit. I assume that's uh, lack of tipping fees across the scale. We just didn't take in as much garbage as we had anticipated. That scale plus the revenues from the invoices. People that haven't paid or people that uh, drop, the drop the service. So on the flip side of that, we should see a drop in expenses from OSS. We will see a reduction in expenses from OSS from the budget in a moment. Okay. But not as much as the drop in revenues. Can, can you get us a, a, a yeah. how that's going to shake out? Yeah. Okay. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 11.1. One, result in bylaw number 16, 2020, being filed in the town of Swan River to establish a council code of conduct be read a second time. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <clears throat> 11-2, result of bylaw number 16, 2020, being filed in the town of Swan River to establish a council code of conduct be read a third time and be passed. Moved by Councillor White, second by Deputy Mayor Tony. Discussion? This is a recorded vote. All in favor? Councillor Gray, how are you voting? I. Okay, it's carried. Result of bylaw number 18, 2020, being a bylaw in the town of Swan River. The amend is bylaw number 7, 2020, which provided for the expenditure and borrowing of funds for the purchase of a firefighting incident command vehicle be read a first time. Moved by Deputy Mayor Tony, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? So this was the total cost of the of the vehicle, including like fit up with whatever kind of accessories were to be added to it. Go ahead, Mr. Gnita. Uh The capital budget had forty-seven thousand for. The vehicle itself to be borne by borrowing, and then thirty-five thousand for all the added stuff to be borne by the fire truck reserve fund. So this is just for the vehicle itself. Yeah. Further discussion. All in favor? Opposed. It's carried. Eleven four. Result of bylaw number 19, 2020, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to amend its bylaw number 8, 2020, which provided for the expenditure and borrowing of funds for the purchase of a motor backhoe be read a first time. Moved by Councillor Memorial, seconded by Councillor Gray. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Okay, number 12, 12.1. This is the notice that was given out the last meeting. Resolved at Town of Swan River Council Resolution 2020-286 be rescinded. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor Delorier. Now I can open up for discussion. Um, I asked to bring this motion back for uh, to be reviewed or and rescinded, um, and it's to deal with uh, structures on public reserves. Um, basically, if I look at it and go from there's a number of areas in the town uh, where we have encroachment onto our public reserves. Um, and throughout the summer, um, we've, since we've had some uh, first reading of our bylaw uh, on some other properties and whatnot, uh, there's been a number of uh, rate payers that have expressed their uh, 
displeasure um, and thoughts on people being able to put structures on public uh, reserves without um, seeking approval as required uh, through our building bylaw, uh, putting structures on public reserves. So, and then I also find it uh, where I have difficulty um, where we have individuals that if they want to uh, put structures on their own private property, but want to be within the variance of the buffer zone of their lot lines or property lines, they have to go through uh, a public hearing and a variance process and expense funds for it. So they have to go through that whole process to even just build structures that are entirely on their own property. Um, so I bring this uh, forward for uh, council to reconsider and I have another motion going forward subsequent to this uh, to amend that. Further discussion? So just to be clear, I thought that the other, the previous motion that was brought forward on this was a review, not a not a rescinding. Council can make the decision on what uh, that is. So if moved to have a second here, then it could be discussed. Council would also like to bring up a point of point of point of order, uh, Mr. Mayor. Who is a sitting member of council who directly benefits from the discussions in the upcoming vote? So I'm not sure it's appropriate that we even have a discussion with him in the room. So I, I guess if he wants to stay, then that's fine. But I, I, I raise the I raise the point. I, I guess that is something that I'm getting into in my direction, so I have no issue with excusing myself at this point. Further discussion? <clears throat> Okay, so I'll be supporting the, uh, the motion that Councillor Morio has brought forward. I think uh, Councillor Morio brought up some good points as far as we just had a, a variance for for somebody wanting to build a a uh, uh, shed on his own own property property, but just close enough to the property line. And here, this is circumventing the entire thing. Another point: we've had other people who he told them that. If, if you didn't have an agreement uh, previous to this, you, you would not be grandfathered in and they complied with, with the directive. So I think uh, we can't, what's good for the goose has to be good for the gander. So, I clearly am missing the point. Um, the bylaw says that, for, that there is some grandfathering in. Um, and I don't know that we can. It, is the purpose to change it so that people would not be grandfathered in? Is that what this purpose is? I, I'm not sure what's the variance that's being, or the change that's being sought. Because I, I don't know, I, I, at, at this point, I think we've got significant problems if we simply um, say, okay, everybody has to get it off. I, I think that's not really something that's possible at this point. That um, covered, that's, sorry, but that's covered in... If, if this resolution uh, to rescind is passed, then there is going to be a new, another resolution that's going to cover that off in twelve two. But yeah, okay. I I, I don't uh, I don't understand why we wouldn't just amend the resolution or, or create a policy. I, we keep creating policies. We keep creating resolutions, and and I, I point to the res, the variance. Unless there's a good reason. And, and I mean a reason that is related to the application of the of a bylaw or of a resolution. We shouldn't willy nilly change them. And and we've now had any number of people. I agree with this that we've allowed, had any number of people who removed things and so on. And and I don't actually, you know, I I probably told people this story about being in Thompson and, and being. Um, incredibly unhappy when um, a, a neighbor went about 150 feet into public space, creating a, a larger yard for himself. And, and it stunned me. And we ended up, we, I ended up raising with council and they voted against um, the idea of holding people accountable. And I, and I used to say, well, I come from Swan River and that would never happen. And, and then I come here and find, in fact, it did happen. The problem is that I think we've already gone through this process sort of 
by letting people do it for three years and now a process of, of saying to people they're going to be able to be grandfathered in. And I don't, I, you know, I, I, I leave it to you. I, I think we should let sleeping, sleeping dogs lie. That's my, my opinion. So um, it, it may be that we should, and, and again, I'm certainly prepared to talk about review of this resolution by way of a public hearing, get points on both sides and and maybe we should say to people you have two years or something of that nature but i don't agree with rescinding it we just passed the resolution so that's my point thank you further discussion Recorded vote, please. Okay. okay so we'll no further discussion all in favor no, opposed? i am opposed <clears throat> so that carries us on to 12 2. Yeah. Whereas the town of Swan River, under its zoning bylaw, has set aside parcels of land within the town limits designated as public reserves, and whereas these public reserves be set aside as green space and for the enjoyment and use of all residents, therefore, be it resolved that all property owners in the town of Swan River who own any structure or structures that are encroaching on town-owned property on or before January the 1st, 2020, must notify the town manager by November the 1st, 2020 to obtain council approval as set out in the Town of Swan River building bylaw and sign an agreement with the Town of Swan River in order to continue encroaching on town property with the existing structures. And further, that the agreement will include, among other provisions, a stipulation that if deemed appropriate at any time, the town of Swan River, giving 30 days notice, may order the encroaching property owner to have all encroaching structures removed, and that the encroaching property owner also cause the town of Swan River home property to be resorted to an acceptable state similar to the surroundings. And further, that prior to the sale of the property who, whose owner has structures that are encroaching on town-owned property, that the owner shall ensure all encroaching structures are permanently removed and that the town-owned property is restored to acceptable states similar to the surroundings. And further, that no unauthorized encroachments to town-owned property will be permitted after January the 1st, 2020. And also that proof may be required to show that the encroaching structure predates January 1st, 2020. Moved by Councilor Morio. Seconded by Councilor DeLaurier. Discussion. Councilor DeLaurier and then Councilor DeLaurier. Um, I move this uh, uh, motion forward, which it kind of is more or less amending the first one, but it adds a little bit more clarity to it. Um, and it's my understanding that uh, any structures that we have within the town limits that are on public reserves that are predating January 1st, 2020, we do have current agreements with uh, those individuals. Um, but between January 1st and today's date, um, if there's any of them out there that are um, out there, uh, there may not be uh, agreements with the town for that or individuals that uh, have sought council's approval to put it on public reserve. Um, so this adds a little bit more clarification to that and I'll bring it forward. Okay. Councilor DeLorde. Um, I'd like to suggest an amendment. Um, I'll be supporting the resolution, but I'd like to suggest an amendment uh, <coughs> At the very last line there, I think we should uh, add that uh, no unauthorized encroachments of town owned property will be permitted after January 1st, 2020, and also be required by showing encroaching structures uh, predates January 1st, 2020. Um, any any structures uh, encro that were encroaching after January 1st, 2020 must be removed by November November 4th, 2020. No, nowhere in there it, does it clarify what happens if you fall up, you know, a lot of it details with what happens if your structure was from prior to January 1st, but what are, what is the clear, hard and fast rules on what's to happen to structures that were put on? So I think 
that it, by putting November 4th, that gives them two, uh, gives them two weeks from tomorrow. Administration can phone them first thing in the morning. And uh, you know, if administration is aware of structures that, uh, that were put on after January 1st, and they have two weeks to remove them. So that amendment, as the, you don't have a vote on that. that is, it's a friendly amendment. You, you, no, I think you have to have a vote on the amendment. But what were we told about that? Friendly? Well, don't it's a friendly amendment that you don't. If, it's just a, if you're just doing an amendment, then yes, you have to have a vote or a second. Okay. Does the mover and seconder agree? So, does the mover and the seconder agree? I'm good with it. I'm good with it. So, and you can go ahead. So, can you. Uh, um, so, after the, the very last period, add uh, uh, any structures, uh, any, any encroachments after uh, January 1st, 2020 must be removed by November 4th, 2020. So, so the last paragraph and further that no unauthorized encroachments to the town owned property will be permitted after January 1st, 2020. And also that proof may be required to show that the encroaching structures predate January 1st, 2020. Any encroachments after January 1st, 2020. Sorry, January the 1st, 2020, must be removed by November the 4th, 2020. Okay, uh, Councillor Gray. Yes. Um. Uh, well, I have. I agree with the principle. Uh, quite candidly, I think there should be no structures on, um, on, um, town property, and I think there should be no. Um, variations from zoning. If we're going to have a bunch of variations, we should just do away with the zoning bylaw. But um, and 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 we choose not to do that. So um, so I, philosophically, I agree with it. I think that the process here is draconian, and I I don't agree with the process. So I will vote against the motion. Uh, I agree with the principle. And had we gone through a different process, um, you would have had my support. Further discussion? All in favor? Recorded vote. All in favor? Opposed? David Gray. It's carried. You can bring, you can ask uh, the councilor to bring the phone back in line. Resolve the pursuit of sections 152 and 3 of the municipal act. Council go to committee and close the meeting to the public. We have uh, personnel and uh, yeah, to discuss. It's moved by Council Royal, second by Council White. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried out. It's very camera. Resolve that this regular meeting of the council will now be adjourned at 9.01 p.m. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Delorier. All in favor? Absolutely. Goodbye. Good Thank you.